So amen, everybody. Just want to welcome you. This is the word portion of uh, Kingdom Awakening Church. Amen. And so uh, just want to welcome everybody. Happy Sunday. God bless you. God bless you uh, out there on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching this. And God bless you on Zoom. Amen. And so uh, I'm Chandra Davis. My husband's Anthony Davis. And we're just welcoming you. This is the word portion of Kingdom Awakening Church. Amen. And so today I'm just going to share with you what I feel like God has for me to share. And then I'm going to get on out of the way. Amen. And so... Um, what, what we're going to do is, uh, I, 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 what I feel like God is saying today is we're going to talk about um, God is in the fire. Amen. It's so important that we understand that when we get thrown in fires, God is in the fire with us. I, I just wanted to reference Daniel 3, where it talks about the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And uh, it, it's so important to understand that when they were, they would they refused to bow to what society said was okay. So, and when they did that, they were thrown into the fire. But I want to encourage you all because God is in the fire when we're thrown in, in the fire. God is there. So don't be afraid to be thrown into the fire. So the thing about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I, I love the book of Daniel. I love the story of Daniel. I love the story of three Hebrew boys because when you think about it, these boys were all teenage kind of boys, but they loved God and they, and they kept God and they kept God's convictions and his statutes and his commandments, even in times of distress and in trouble. You have to realize that they were taken from their parents. They were taken from their homes. They were taken from every familiar place, from their customs. They were taken from everything. And they were seated at a king's table, but they refused to eat the king's meat. Do you know that in the Bible, when they're talking about meat, it's talking about doctrine. They refused to accept what the society at the time said was right. See, at the time, it was right to bow down to, to, to the golden images and, and to, to, to bow down to the king as God. But they said, not so. We're going to choose to serve God no matter what. And so in this day and time, I just come to encourage you, uh, man and woman of, of God, I come to encourage you that don't bow down to what society says is right. Listen, what God says is right is right. And what God says is wrong is wrong. That's the bottom line. Don't be afraid to stand for what's right because you're afraid to get thrown in the fire. Because if you get thrown in the fire, God is in the fire. You have to understand that. You, we can't be afraid to get thrown in the fire. I want to read these two scriptures because this is literally where we are at this day and time and hour. And the first one I'm going to read is 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. And then I'm going to read 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. So 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5, it says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead as his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be steady. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itchy ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Listen, everybody, we are listening. We are living in the times where people are heaping up for themselves teachers. They do not want to hear the doctrine of the word of God. They want to change it. Listen, we better pay attention to the times that we're in. We better pay attention to the times that the policy and things that are being passed in our nation against the Christian faith. That certain things, you know, that God says is wrong, the world is trying to say it's right. And they want to make preachers and fivefold ministers, they want to make us criminals if we declare the truth of the word of God. You better pay attention that this is the times that we are living in where people have itchy ears and they don't want to hear the truth. They rather get for themselves teachers who would teach them lies. Amen. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, desires, uh, despairs of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, 
but denying its power and from such people turn away. Listen, there's so many people who call themselves Christians and have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of God, the power to live according to how God says to live. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. See, here's the thing. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they kept God's commandments even in, in captivity, even in slavery. They chose not to go along what was going on. They chose instead to be thrown into the fire. Listen, everybody, we're getting down to a place where we're going to have to make a choice. We're either going to go along to get along or we're going to be thrown in the fire for standing up for what's right. And I'm not talking about being mean and hateful and nasty. What I'm talking about is standing for the truth of the word of God. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, it, regardless of how people say that we should teach and preach, teaching and preaching what God has given us to teach and preach and standing on it, even in the face of getting uh, of the threat of being thrown in the fire, because we have to remember that God is in the fire. Listen, it's so important that we understand that oftentimes as believers, we go through struggles of oppression and depression and anxiety and fear and worry because our expectations are wrong. We expect the world to love us and we expect the world to accept us and be at ease and be at peace with us. We expect the leadership, the, the, the structured leadership of the church to do the same. But listen, this is what Jesus said. He said, they hated me and they persecuted me. They're going to hate you and they're going to persecute you. He was talking about the religious leaders. That's listen. Let me help you out. It's equivalent to the fivefold ministry and the structured church today. He said, they didn't know me and that's why they do it. That's why they hated me and persecuted me. As a believer, the world is going to hate you and persecute you. When you have wrong expectations, you are surprised. You, 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 you get caught off with oppression and depression because you think you're supposed to be accepted. You're supposed to be loved. We're supposed to be thrown in the fire because the fire authenticates our anointing. See, the three Hebrew boys, they would have said they're just being rebellious and they're just doing their own thing. But when they were thrown in that fire, when Jesus, when God showed up, their anointing was now authenticated. Listen, the king said, nobody better speak a word of the God of Daniel. Nobody better speak a word of the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because he's the most high God. God wants that here and now. While these policies, while these things are being are being pushed and being forced to, to be known as truth, it's okay. Society can bow, but as blood-bought believers, we can't bow. It's better to be thrown in the fire because that's where God is. God is in the fire. It's better not to bow and go along to get along because God is not pleased with that. Amen. So I'm going to read the scripture, John 16, verses 1 through 3. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the timing is coming that whoever kills you will think that they offer service to God. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Listen, 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 child of God. We have to change our expectations and understand that Jesus was persecuted and hated by the religious systems of the world. The religious systems of the world are going to hate and persecute us too. It, is, it should not be a surprising thing. Jesus said, I'm telling you this so that you won't stumble. So listen, and when you keep eating from the king's table, eating the king's doctrine, listen to the worldly wisdom and caring what the worldly wisdom, it gnaws you to sleep. And so what happens is when you're asleep, your expectations, they're, they're, they're not sharpening with the word of God. And you start to think you're supposed to be accepted and people are supposed to be happy at your appearing. The true prophets in the Old Testament, people hated them. They would be said, oh, here comes this troublemaker. He's always prophesying this and that and the other. They were not liked. People did not like them. They were not happy about when the word of God was coming. Because when the word of God comes, light comes. And the Bible says that men hate light because they want to keep doing dark things. They want to live in darkness so they don't want the light of the word of God because it shines and it exposes the things that they're doing that are not pleasing to God. God has given us his Holy Spirit so that we can live right, so that we can walk right, so that we can talk right. And it's so important that we have to contend for these things. People would rather just heap up teachers for themselves instead of contending for what's right. Sanctification is a process. Listen, sometimes we fall and we got to get up. Sometimes things happen, but there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's better to keep getting thrown in the fire, keep falling and keep getting up, keep going forward, then just go along to get along and heap up preachers that would say what you're doing is okay. 
Listen, we live in a time where society says, it's okay, you don't have to get married, just live together, it's fine, get to know each other. But the Bible says marriage is honorable. We live in a time where people are saying, love is love. You know, it doesn't matter who gets married. We know what God says about it, that it's abominable. Listen, we love people, but we have to allow the word of God to shine the light on us so that we can live free. The truth is what sets us free, amen? We have to love people enough to tell them the truth without hating them and being mean and nasty and mean hearted. No, we don't want to, we, we, we don't, listen, God's will is that none should perish, but all should come into everlasting life. Amen. But we live in a day and time where people are saying wrong is right and right is wrong. And we have, listen, it's the same time as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The society was saying, yeah, it's okay to do this. And they said, no, we won't bow. We are in those days, everybody. We are in those days. This is the time where we have to stand. I'm telling you better pay attention to these policies being passed. If you say certain things, you, you, you stand a chance of becoming a criminal as a preacher of the word of God. Listen, it doesn't matter if you get thrown in the fire. God is in the fire. Child of God, don't not do what God is telling you to do because you're afraid of the fire. You're afraid of the threat. You're afraid of the systems of religion. A lot of these religious systems in this world, they are nothing but modern day synagogues, Pharisees, and scribes. And these people, they, they persecuted Jesus and they hated Jesus and they will persecute us and they will hate us. We have to change our expectations so that when we're going to do what God is calling us to do, we we won't get, we won't stumble. Jesus said, I'm warning you so that you don't stumble when these things happen. He said, you're going to get thrown out of synagogues. You're going to be persecuted. People are not going to accept you. They hated me and they are going to hate you too. And when you speak the truth of the word of God, people are going to find a reason because people do not like their sin to be exposed. Amen. And so we, we have to understand that, you know, we have to be like Jesus. We have to follow, do, do what Jesus did. Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave at the cross. We can defeat every enemy in our life. We have to understand that all war, warfare in the Old Testament was out in the land for the land. You could see the enemy. You could see the land. And the New Testament, it has shifted to the realm of the spirit. We have enemies. Listen, some of us are struggling with sloth. Some of us are struggling with addictions, with fear, with anxiety, with worry. These are things that we have to get aggressive and go after in the realm of the spirit. Matthew 11 and 12 says, since the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violent and violent men lay hold of it. Or the kingdom of heaven is forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. We have to get aggressive in the spirit. We have to get aggressive in intercession and go after these things and not just get along to go along. The world says, oh, let's, let's, let's do some anger management. Let's manage this. Let's, let's, let's manage your anxiety. God said, can Cast out anger. Cast out fear. That's what causes anxiety. Some of this stuff can't be managed. It has to be cast out. We have to go back to the word of God. We can't keep getting teachers who gnaw us to sleep, who, who are eating from the king's table, who are taking these, 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 these worldly wisdom that sounds good, but it's against the true word of God. And the word of God is what's going to set us free. The, light, the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Listen, sometimes we just have to say we missed it. Listen, I've missed it. We've all missed it. Listen, sometimes we have to repent and return back to our first works. Today is the day of the Lord. Today is the day of the Lord's favor. Listen, he said, seek me while I may be found. Don't you know that if you just keep going, he said, God said, if you take a step toward me, I'll take a step toward you. God will be with us. Don't quit and don't just agree with worldly systems. Stop amen and agreeing with these teachers who are not speaking the true word of God. They're speaking with at the king's table, which is gnawing us to sleep. It is time to wake up, child of God. The Bible says, listen, he said, oh, captive daughter of Zion, for nothing you were sent to the slavery and for nothing you'll come out if you just receive the word of god the truth of the word of god you'll come out of bondage in your mind the way that they train the baby elephants is when they're babies they they, they put it they put a chain on them well you know nowadays the circuses are not really supposed to have but you know when they had circuses and they were training the elephants they put a chain around them um, they even heard that they do this with like in other countries when they use elephants as slaves and so the elephant tries to pull that leg and he can't so by the time the elephant get, gets bigger it thinks it's stuck Elephants are like over a ton, right? A lot of times, by the time the elephant becomes an adult, they break the chain off. So it's just like a little chain. If you ever went to circuses, you'll see the elephant, when they had elephants, just put a little chain on it because in its mind, it was still stuck. 
Although it can break any chain and although it's no longer stuck in its mind, it was still stuck. So what happens is the enemy begins to attack us when we're young with, with all these hurts and pains and shames and all these different things. And we think we're stuck and it's a trip. We are not stuck. It's like the baby elephant. When you become an adult, you can set yourself free when you receive the truth of the word of God. And this is why the enemy fight the word of God from coming forth. And this is why so many false teachers are coming up. And, and their goal is, is, is to derail people because just like these people, these religious leaders hated Jesus, these current religious leaders will hate us, will hate the remnant, the true seekers of God, those who are for the kingdom of God going forward. We're not interested in trying to build our own mega ministry or we're trying to build our name, but we're interested in the kingdom of God going forward. It's so important. This is what God said. God said we need to wage war against that spirit of lethargy. Lethargy is a state of sleeping or deep unresponsiveness or un inactivity. It's not about being busy and doing stuff, but it's about we all been commissioned. When you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we've been commissioned to do the Great Commission. And number one thing is make disciples. Amen. We have to make disciples do the work of an evangelist. It's so important that we understand that we should be equipping the believers. And so many times we people fall in these religious systems where they have to sit and do this and do that. And people are not being equipped to handle the attacks that are coming against their life. The Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. We should not be walking in, in, in lack. We should not be walking in poverty. We should not be walking in, in, in beneath our means. But so many times people are because they're not equipped to be able to use the keys of the kingdom that Jesus died on the cross for us to have the keys into the kingdom to bind and to loose. People don't understand that we've been given power and authority over scorpions and over snakes and over all the power of the enemy. But because they don't know how to use that power, they're walking beneath their means and it doesn't have to be so. And it's because the preachers are eating from the king's table and they're gnawing the people to sleep instead of awaking them. Woe to the preachers who are not awakening God's people in this hour. Woe to the people who are bowing down to what society is saying right in this hour and ignore what God says is wrong in this hour. Listen, I want to encourage you. We can always repent. God is faithful and he's just. He said, if we miss it, we can confess our sins and he's faithful and he's just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If you've missed it, if you've gone along with something that you know you shouldn't have gone along, just repent, turn around and go back to your first works. It's so important that we don't be afraid of the backlash. And oftentimes we also get persecuted and hated by our own family. But Jesus also warned us of this. He said, listen, families will be divided. It'll be two against three, three against two. They won't, y'all won't believe the same things. Guess what? It's okay. Let your family throw you in the fire. God is in the fire. We have to understand that God is in the fire. It's okay to stand for God and get thrown in the fire because God is in the fire. The fire authenticates our anointing. Let those people throw you in the fire. It's okay. God is in the fire. It's so important that we understand that. It's so important that that, that we, we, ha we, we have to be like David. Listen, when Goliath, when he stood up against the children of Israel, he, David said, listen, like how dare this un this unclean this uncircumcised man coming against the armies of God, right? So here's the thing: God gave us the armor so we can stand. So we have to stand. But sometimes what standing looks like is charging to the battle. See, David charged to the battle. After he knocked him down, he took off his he took his own sword and he cut his head off. Some stuff we have to cut off at the root. Do you understand? We can't just knock it down and think we're good because later on in life it we'll have to deal with that same stuff. We have to go and we have to cut it at the root. Do you understand? Sometimes standing our ground looks like charging to the battle. We can't run away from the battle. Sometimes we have to run to the battle, knowing that when we signed on, we signed on to be a, to com be commissioned as soldiers. That's why we have armor. Jesus Christ died for us to be free. He died for us to be whole. He died for us to be healthy. He does not want a weak people who will easily give up what he died for us to have. We have to understand that God is in the fire. We can't be afraid to stand for truth because of the threat of the backlash of being thrown in the fire. Listen, y'all, we are living in evil days. These are perilous times. These are perilous times. Listen, the love of many are waxing cold. We have to understand, don't lose your love. Do you understand? You have to continue to look into the hills from which come up your help. Your help comes from the Lord. Don't focus on people doing negative things. Focus on God. Are you willing to die for what you believe? 
We're coming down to those days, everybody. Are you willing to go to jail for what you believe? Are you willing to be fined for what you believe? Because this is what's happening. You know, they're saying, well, if you speak this, if you speak that, y'all better pay attention to your Bibles. They're changing the translations. You better get some, some, some physical Bibles. They're changing words. They're changing translations. They're changing things. You better pay attention. Don't be afraid, child of God, to be thrown into the fire because God is in the fire. That's where your authenticity will come from when you get thrown in that fire because then the, pe the people who threw you in the fire, when they see that you're not burned, when they see that you're not affected, they're going to have to call you out. And they're going to have to acknowledge your God as the most high God because you have to remember that there is a God of this world. And he's the one that comes up with all these society norms, all the society norms that say wrong is right and right is wrong. And everyone just getting along, going along because we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. We want to be politically correct. Don't be afraid to do what God is calling you to do because you're afraid of the backlash. You're afraid of the warfare. You're afraid of the fire, the fire of the warfare. God is in the warfare. God is in the fire. God is on your side. Amen. And so it's so important that we uh, understand that Jesus was the, is the champion of heaven. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. And he said, listen, I hold all power. And then he threw it to us. So he said, what I do, you will do. He said, and you'll do greater because I go to the Father. We have the spirit of God. We don't need any man to teach us. And this is not a, a ploy for all the renegade lone soldiers because God said we're jointly fit together. He didn't put us to go, go at life alone and do what we want to do. There's always balance. I always have to say that because some people take stuff to the left. But you have to understand is sometimes fear will act like wisdom when it's really just fear. If fear has to be cast out, it can't be managed. Amen. What God says you can do, you can do, and you need to do it. And don't allow fear to stop you. Don't allow people from the king's table to stop you. Don't allow what society says is right to stop you from declaring the word of God. When you declare the word of God, we have to, as believers, change our expectation. Only he said, listen, in the Proverbs, it says, if you rebuke, if you correct a wise man, he'll become wiser. If you correct a foolish man, he'll hate you. You have to remember when we declare the truth of the word of God, wise men will love you, but foolish men will hate you. So we have to change our expectation. And, and just because someone has a title or in a system of religion, someone's a pastor or a prophet or apostle, it doesn't mean they're wise and it doesn't mean they know God. We, the Bible says that he gives us the Holy Spirit as an inner witness. We need to stop amen and stuff that we don't have an inner witness about. I don't care how much we like them. We love people. Listen, just because we love people, we don't want to be like Jonah. Who, the, all the men who had Jonah on the ship, they lost all their natural goods all because they didn't want to throw Jonah overboard. Listen, we have to understand, Jonah, his opinion was rooted in pride and rebellion. Pride says that some people are better than other people, and we're all made in the image of God, and it's a lie. Rebellion says, I want to do what I want to do, and not what God tells me to do. This is the thing. We have to make Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. Lord, See, most people only make him their Savior. They accept the free sacrifice that he died on the cross, but they never make him Lord. And these are those people in Matthew 7 when he said, everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. I've done wonderful things in your name. And he said, away from me. I never knew you. You workers of lawlessness. Because Lord means I give you authority to rule over my life. Meaning I die and now I'm dead because I died with Christ and I've been risen with Christ. I sit in heavenly places. It's, just, it's not me that lives any longer, but the spirit of God that lives in me. Meaning I can't live where I want to live. I can't go where I want to go. I can't connect where I want to connect. I can't do what I want to do just because I have an opinion to do it. I have to follow what God says concerning me. Some of us in the face of trials, tests, and temptations, and, and in the face of accusations when people coming at us, we need to have the attitude of, you know what? It doesn't even matter because I'm already dead. You can't kill me because I'm already dead. Do you understand what I'm saying? We've already died with Christ, and we were resurrected with Christ, and now we're seated in heavenly places. It all comes down to do you believe it? Are you fully persuaded? Are you fully persuaded? Well, are you willing to die for your faith? Listen, if you're not, then, then you don't have Jesus. Jesus they, listen, was it Luke 9, 23, the qualifications of being a disciple? He said, deny yourself, pick up your cross daily and follow me. If you can't deny what you want in life, that you can't be a disciple. What, uh, what they said, Catherine Coleman, uh, she said, what is it going to cost you to follow Jesus? She said, it's going to cost you everything.
<laughs> Amen. Listen, everybody, I just want to encourage you. Stand up in this hour. God has given us armor so we can stand. He's given us his name. He's given us the blood. He's given us his word. He's given us so many things so that we can stand in this hour. And listen, expect persecution. Expect the world to hate you. Expect the religious systems to hate you because they're supposed to. They hated Jesus. They're going to hate you. The remnant is arising in this hour. Don't think people are going to applaud you and say, come on, come on. When they killed Jesus, they killed all the prophets. They killed anyone speaking the truth of the word of God. Don't expect that you're going to get a, a hand clap. If you're getting a hand clap, you should question what you're saying and what you're doing by the religious system, the leaders of the religious systems in this world. I just want to encourage you today. Stand on what God is telling you to do. We don't, we, listen, the spirit of God will lead us and guide us in all truth. Do what God is calling you to do. Connect with who God is connecting you to, calling you to connect with. Disconnect from who God is calling you to disconnect with. Listen, we can love people and we can still do what God is calling us to do. And don't be afraid of getting thrown in the fire because God is in the fire and he's going to authenticate your anointing in the fire where it's going to shut the mouths of every naysayer, every chooser because when they see that they put you in the fire and that the fire didn't burn you you came out with no burnts <laughs> you know some, I, I saw this meme and i thought it was so funny he said i would be mad too because they threw dirt on my name and flowers grew listen people don't understand that we're seeds so when you when people try to bury you flowers grow we bloom because we are seeds i want to encourage you child of god get a right perspective and a right expectation for who you are in god don't be afraid of standing on truth. Just get thrown in the fire because that's where your anointing will be authenticated in the fire. Amen. God bless you, Facebook. We are signing off.